What happens when the US Navy builds a warship so futuristic it looks like Darth Vader's yacht, costs like a small country, and fires weapons faster than your morning Wi-Fi? You get the Zumwalt-class destroyer, the stealth battleship that went from punchline to hypersonic powerhouse. Why does that pyramid have a hull? If you were strolling along the shore and suddenly saw a giant gray pyramid slicing through the waves, you'd be forgiven for thinking Hollywood was filming another Star Wars spin-off. But no, that isn't a spaceship, it's the US Navy's Zumwalt class destroyer at 610 feet long with a beam of 80.7 feet and weighing nearly 16,000 tons. The Zumwalt class is technically labeled a destroyer, but its size is closer to a light cruiser. This futuristic behemoth can sprint at over 30 knots and operates with a crew of a about 197 sailors, which is shockingly small for a ship this size. On the outside, the most striking feature is its angular, tumble-home hull design and faceted composite deckhouse. These shapes drastically reduce its radar cross-section, making it appear on enemy radars like a humble fishing boat, albeit one that can launch cruise missiles and deploy helicopters. In other words, the Zumwalt doesn't just sneak around, it actively confuses anyone trying to keep track of it. The stealth profile is more than cosmetic. The Navy designed this ship to hide in plain sight, complicating detection in contested littoral waters where radars often struggle. Its SPY-3 multifunction radar was built to thrive in these environments, making the Zumwalt a hunter that's very good at blending into the clutter. In practice, it's like trying to spot a gray cat on a foggy day. You know it's there somewhere, but good luck pinpointing it before it pounces. The all-electric heart of a floating power plant. The real magic of the Zumwalt isn't just its shape, but the revolutionary way it's powered. Traditional warships divide power between propulsion and ship systems, not the Zumwalt. It was designed with an integrated power system that funnels electricity to everything on board. Four gas turbine generators, two large and two smaller ones, combine to produce enough energy to light up a small town. That power feeds two 33.6 megawatt advanced induction motors that drive the shafts and move the ship, but the same grid can redirect energy to sensors, electronics, and, in the future, energy-hungry weapons. This makes the Zumwalt the naval equivalent of a Tesla on steroids. The ship doesn't have to choose between sprinting across the ocean and powering its advanced radars or future-directed energy weapons. It can simply allocate the juice where it's needed. The Navy deliberately designed it with a massive power margin to accommodate future upgrades, lasers, railguns, or other systems that might otherwise trip a circuit breaker on older destroyers. On top of that, automation is everywhere. Advanced machinery controls, automated monitoring, and streamlined ship services allow a crew of under 200 to handle a warship that would have required 300 to 400 sailors on older classes. Less manpower means smaller crews, lower costs, and ideally more focus on tactical rather than maintenance tasks. The big swing and the miss. Here's where the Zumwalt story veers into tragicomedy. The class was built around two enormous 155mm advanced gun systems intended to fire precision-guided shells called Long Range Land Attack Projectiles, or Long Range Land Attack Projectile. These shells were designed to hit targets over 60 miles away with pinpoint accuracy, providing devastating naval fire support for Marines and soldiers ashore. The concept was a throwback to the age of naval gunfire support, but with modern precision and range. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, reality crushed the dream. When the program was slashed from an original plan of 32 ships to just three, the cost of each long-range land attack projectile shell skyrocketed. Estimates put them at nearly $800,000 to $1 million per round, which is about the cost of firing a small cruise missile every time you pulled the trigger. The Navy understandably canceled LR LAP procurement in 2016, leaving the Zumwalt's massive gun houses essentially useless. The optics weren't great. A futuristic destroyer armed with two giant guns and no affordable ammunition. It became the butt of jokes, a billion dollar warship with no bullets. If irony had a mascot, it would look like the Zumwalt's forward deck in 2017, from no bullets to hypersonics. Out of failure though, came an opportunity for reinvention. The Navy decided to rearm the Zumwalt class with something far deadlier than a million dollar shell, hypersonic missiles. In 2023, the USS Zumwalt entered a shipyard modernization 
vacation period at Huntington Ingalls Industries to remove its advanced gun systems and install large missile tubes for the Navy's conventional prompt strike system. This weapon, also being fielded by the Army as the long-range hypersonic weapon, uses a boost glide vehicle capable of traveling at speeds greater than Mach 5 over vast ranges. By late 2024, the Navy confirmed that Zumwalt had been undocked with four giant vertical launch tubes installed. Each tube is designed to carry three hypersonic missiles, giving the ship a dozen in total. This makes Zumwalt the first U.S. surface warship to be armed with hypersonics. The second and third ships, USS Michael Monsoor and USS Lyndon B. Johnson, are scheduled to undergo similar retrofits in sequence. If all goes as planned, by the end of the decade, all three Zumwalts will form a stealthy trio of long-range strike platforms capable of launching hypersonics from the sea. It's a far cry from the no-ammo jokes of the past. A price tag that could sink a small country. Of course, all of this comes with a caveat, the program cost. Originally envisioned as a fleet of 32 ships, the Zumwalt class was whittled down over time due to ballooning expenses and shifting Navy priorities. By the time the dust settled, only three ships were built, including research and development. The program cost is estimated at over $22 billion. That averages out to around seven to $8 billion per ship when accounting for all the sunk costs, making them some of the most expensive destroyers ever constructed. The cost overruns triggered a Nun McCurdy breach, a Pentagon mechanism that forces a formal review when programs go wildly over budget. The reasons weren't mysterious. The Navy and its contractors tried to field a revolutionary hull form, a new propulsion system, cutting edge automation, advanced sensors, and an entirely new gun system all at once. As the Government Accountability Office has repeatedly pointed out, trying to innovate on every front simultaneously is a recipe for delays and cost blowouts. The Zumwalt became a textbook example in defense acquisition circles of what not to do. The sensor suite and the not aegis brain. Unlike the Navy's workhorse Arleigh Burke destroyers, the Zumwalt does not use the Aegis combat system. Instead, it runs the Zumwalt mission system, developed by Raytheon, with the AN-SPY-3 multifunction radar at its core. Originally, the ship was supposed to carry a dual-band radar combining X-band and S-band capabilities, but the S-band portion was cut for cost reasons. The AN-SPY-3 remains the main sensor, designed to excel in the literal clutter where the Navy expects the ship to operate. Meanwhile, the rest of the fleet is moving toward the AN-SPY-6 radar, which Raytheon has been testing extensively for future destroyers and carriers. Zumwalt's different combat system architecture reflects reflects its role as a kind of experimental testbed for future naval technologies. While that has made integration more difficult, it has also allowed the class to chart its own path. Distributed Firepower Another unusual design feature of the Zumwalt is its missile storage arrangement. Instead of concentrating vertical launch cells in two clusters, as is common on Arleigh Burks, Zumwalt distributes its 80 peripheral vertical launch system cells around the ship's periphery. This was done to improve survivability. If a hit or explosion occurs in one area, it is less likely to set off a catastrophic chain reaction that wipes out the entire missile magazine. It was a thoughtful engineering choice, even if it complicated design and added cost. The ship's standard missile load includes Tomahawk cruise missiles, standard missiles for air defense, ASROC anti-submarine rockets, and ESSM for close-in defense. Life with a crew of 197. One of the more radical departures from past destroyers is the Zumwalt's crew size. World War II destroyers often carried 250 to 350 sailors. Modern Arleigh Burks carry over 300, yet the Zumwalt manages with fewer than 200. This was made possible by a high degree of automation in propulsion, power management, and damage control. The ship has sensors monitoring everything from flooding to fire hazards, and systems designed to automate responses that would have once required human intervention. Fewer sailors mean lower personnel costs, more room per crew member, and in theory, higher efficiency. It also puts immense pressure on the crew who remain, since there are fewer hands to handle a emergencies or combat damage. The Navy has had to carefully train and structure Zumwalt crews to ensure resilience despite the lean manning concept. So, what do you think? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. I'd love to hear your take. And if you enjoyed diving into the insane engineering behind America's most futuristic battleship, make sure to hit that like button, smash subscribe. Until next time, stay curious, stay sharp, and I'll catch you in the next video.